Staying where we are is actually easier. It's more painful, but we're addicted to the pain because it's familiar. Mm. That's mm. the essence of it. And so we're, because we're so familiar and accustomed to the pain, we're attached to it because we associate our expression in the world or our ability to just live. Um, a big part of that is attached to that pain. And so we don't want to let the pain go. And, I, and I've spoken to this before. It's interesting because... Let me see if I can break it down in more simple terms, but also make some connections. So when we experience, so most of who we are as adults is formed during our developmental years. And there's, there's various um, important phases and stages of our development. And we can even call them critical stages or subcritical stages of our development. But there's two critical stages or ages, age ranges. So from zero to seven and then from, you know, sort of seven to 12, eight to 12, eight to 13 maybe. Um, where so much of us is formed. And so there's, there's, there's um, subcategories of that, subcritical stages of formation and developmental um, staging through those two periods. And much of who we are is formed through that, um, those stages there, through those periods. Now, we bring those coping strategies and we bring those ways of seeing the world, our belief systems, our models of reality, how we give and receive love, what we think about ourselves, how we feel about ourselves, how we judge others, how we deal with conflict, how we, what makes us happy, what we value, what's important to us, what we're attracted to, what we're interested in, our sexuality, and the list goes on, right? Mm. We bring that into our adult lives and our adult relationships and our adult endeavours. If that, those areas of life are left unchecked, in other words, if we don't reflect on why we do what we do, if we don't reflect on our thoughts, our actions, our internal behaviours, belief systems, etc., and our external behaviours, our expressions in the world, our personality types, who we're attracting, type of people, how we argue, um, et cetera, et cetera. If we leave all that unchecked, we just keep repeating the same patterns from our developmental years. And we sort of get stuck and when we experience pain and difficulty, we don't know why, but, but we just get frustrated. But we, we then usually have very similar experiences with different people with different situations, right? Mm. So... When you're talking about change, we're speaking to these coping strategies that we develop as young children to deal with our pain and difficulty. And these are psychological, psycho-emotional coping strategies, and they help us deal with the difficulty at hand. Now, at that time, they can be really useful. And I'll give you an example in a moment. At that time, they can be really useful. But as adults, they may not really serve us because they're perpetuating not only a coping strategy that doesn't work as an adult, but also a pain that is being amplified by a similar situation that we're experiencing as adults that really doesn't warrant that level of coping strategy to come in place, which actually pushes people away, distances us, and keeps us stuck in the past. Are you following me so far? Yes, yes. Cool. Okay. Yep. So yep. what happens is we're more addicted to the coping strategies that deal with the pain. Now, the coping strategy doesn't exist without the pain so we keep playing the pain over in our adult lives which makes the change more difficult right and so the coping strategy says to us ah oh, we're capable we're able we're worthy i feel better mm -hmm. so we're addicted to the feeling better after the feeling really bad now an example of that is as a kid if you grew up in an environment that was very abusive very volatile very violent i i did as an example one of the coping strategies I used when I was a younger kid, so three, four years old, two years old, five years old, was um, try not to be seen and try not to be heard. In other words, make everybody else happy and sacrifice my needs. Because if I can make everybody else happy, chances are the environment's not going to be as violent or as volatile. Yes. And so that was one of the coping strategies I would bring up as an adult. And so I would live in the shadows. I would make other people happy, but mate, I would be upset or I wouldn't be content or I wouldn't be satisfying my own needs and I wouldn't be following my truth. And one of the coping strategies I developed as a teenager, as a, as a, a later kid, was being very aggressive in the world. So I started, I went the opposite way. So I went on this spectrum. And so what would happen as an adult is because I was so frustrated as a kid about hiding from the world and being bullied and everything else that I, I then lashed out. I found my courage, but in an extreme way and lashed out. And as an adult, I would still have this pattern of people pleasing, but then I would be so upset and frustrated that then I would then lash out as well. Right. And so it was so fucking confusing, but guess what? My childhood was confusing. 
Yes. So yes. I was just reenacting confusion in my adult relationships because it was familiar because yes. I didn't want to change. No matter, even though the change was, even though the circumstances were so painful, I didn't want to change them because it's all I knew. Mm. And I was addicted to the coping strategies of feeling better and having the release. It's like when you're, I'm like, you know, when you're about to sneeze or you really, you really got to go to the toilet and you're holding in your urine. And then when you go, there's like, oh, release. <laughs> when you sneeze, there's this massive release and you feel better, you feel empty. And so for men, the sense of emptiness is very important because it's one of our primary driving forces is a masculine energy. But, be, but take away masculine and feminine dynamics just for a moment. Mm. Um, that, that sense of release is what we're addicted to because it feels so good. But the release doesn't occur because we live in a, a world of duality. The release doesn't occur without the opposite of that, the which builder. is the pain, right. the builder, right. Right? and the challenge. 